Um, this morning, um, I'm going to be making some five-layer face mask for some veterans. But before I do that, I'm also um, using one of my other patterns to make a five-layer face mask. Now, one of the easiest patterns to do is um, the rectangle pattern where you can make uh, ties that go up on the head and around the back of your neck. Um, and I think I just called it the surgical style face mask, but I'll put the link to that video in there. Now by sewing two, um, opening up, cutting and opening up two disposable masks and sewing them along one long edge, I get a filter fabric that I am adding to one piece of muslin that's cut in a rectangle the size of that square, of that pattern. And now I'm just going to go ahead and stitch this and do the same thing I've been doing with the other masks, only this will make this one side of that rectangular mask a four layer filter. Now it's just a little bit short um, on the long edges. In other words, on the, the height when you're wearing the mask. Um, I think this is seven inches top to bottom. And the fabric is just a little bit short on that, but I don't think it's gonna matter that much because this will, a lot of this will be a seam allowance. Um, and this, the reason I'm doing this is because everybody can make a rectangular mask. and You can sew it by hand or by machine. And if you were going to be making it by hand, you could be doing the same thing I'm doing now, only do it by hand instead of machine. There is a shortage on machines. I kind of went shopping yesterday, window shopping, and um, most of the basic models are still sold out. I picked out a brother, um, I forget the number of it, SM1705 it might have been, and um, it was sold out. The Singer uh, 4423 is about $250, which is a lot. Um, trying to think of the other ones. Um, I haven't looked at the Singer Simple machines, but those are probably similar to the Brother. Okay, so I just did that with the machine. I'm going to trim the side edges, um, trim that black fabric off the side edges. I am not going to trim the muslin because now what you would do is take your other piece of fabric that normally goes with this mask pattern and pin these two sides together go around the rectangle, leave an opening down here of about three inches, for the, that's at the bottom, and then turn it inside out, and what you'll end up with, um, the seam allowances will be on the inside, you'll end up with a mask like this that has three layers in the middle, and one facing your face and one facing out. And then when you add the pleat or pleats on the side, 
and then you take your um, ribbon or uh, crocheted strand or whatever and make the strands. And the reason I'm making this video to show you um, not to weave out that pattern because one thing on the CDC website is that um, straps that go up on your head and behind your neck are better than straps that go around your ears, which I don't think a lot of people have realized yet. And my favorite face masks myself are still the surgical style um, because they're adjustable. You can tie them as tight or as loose as you want. And um, also you can make them if you don't have a machine. I can't make uh, the fitted five layer mask without a machine. But this, as I just showed you, you can make without a machine. And you can have um, a five layer. Now one other thing, a friend of mine came by yesterday and China, you know, we, we almost can't compete with China. She managed to find at BJ's a, um, it's a, ma a two layer mask with a pocket on the inside for a filter. Um, three masks for seven dollars and then they sell a box of filters for like another eight or nine dollars you get 40 filters you can do the same thing with this pattern um, the mask she had on they're pretty um, they are a little oriental looking which is fine and um, as soon as I saw her she it reminded me of my doll my I have I used to have dolls from Okinawa that my uncle brought me. And um, very pretty masks, but you can do the same thing. And after you make this type of a rectangular mask, if you don't want to add this fabric, or if you want to use filters just in general, you can always sew a pocket to the inside for a filter. Um, but anyway, we can't compete with what she bought. Um, it cost me, I figured out, it's 30 cents to add these three extra layers to any mask. So it's just an extra step though. Um, and the, what, when she bought that, the equal to the filter, the, um, the filters that came with her mask set are what I'm putting inside the mask so that you can just wash the whole mask and not worry about buying filters. But don't forget about this pattern, the surgical style face mask, because anyone can make it whether you have a machine or not. This is my 1591 that I'm using again. Um, I was just thinking, I'm trying to make sure that I actually um, put the right sides together, which I did. So I leave an opening at the bottom in order to turn it. And before I turn it right side out, I will trim the side fabric off. So that takes, making a rectangular mass takes um, like 10 minutes. 
by machine, maybe a half an hour um, by hand. And then once you turn it inside out, right side out, sorry. Now here's one issue. There, um, there's a seam allowance in the front that, I mean, I technically there are spaces in between um, in between the stitches. So I'm thinking that what I might do when I get this right side out is actually um, go down the center seam again with the seam allowance pressed to the side and that would actually close that gap but you know then we're getting uh, fairly technical about making sure there are no gaps at all and the CDC has not come out yet and said that everybody should be wearing um, five layer face mask they're only saying multiple layers so Okay, so there's your basic face mask. Here's the bottom, and so what I could do is just pin the center with the seam allowance folded over. I could have done it on the on the inside, but I'm kind of just sewing this morning and not really planning. So just go um, up there and, and pin so that the seam allowance is folded over and then stitch one seam down the center which will not only hold the fabric in place in the center and you can tell when the seam allowance is folded over um, but it'll give a little bit more strength to the mask If I had um, the zigzagger attached to this machine, I could zigzag right down it, and that would definitely close everything over. Looks like I, my bobbin ran out, but you get the idea. Um, I'm going to leave those pins in there. So now I will have... Now here's another thing I thought of if you want to add decoration. Um, the flower foot... You can get a flower foot. The flower foot will fit any zig on any um, low shank zigzag machine you can use the flower foot to make like spirograph flowers but on this machine which is a 1591 that doesn't have zigzag it will make circles so you could even put the flower foot on and put circles all over your mask so um, I'm gonna refill the bobbin and the only other thing um, that this mask needs is to go around the edges and add the ties and the pleats. And there's the other style of mask, but it is the kind that ties up over your head and um, behind your neck. And some people I know don't like that. I don't know why. Um, ear loops are probably um, easier, but the CDs the CDC says that the ties up on the head are better. Now I've, I have gone ahead and put um, 
a flower foot on and you may notice my voice just changed a little bit. I'm actually wearing a mask. Um, and when I sew masks um, for other people, I wear a mask. Because even though I wash them and disinfect them and all of that, um, it doesn't make any sense to me to keep breathing on the fabric and then have to make sure I disinfect it well enough. So I wear a mask when I'm sewing for other people. But I have already put three circles on this fabric. I am using um, beige thread. This would be like a whole cloth quilt. And um, I want to show you how the flower foot works on this. So I am basically making one inch circles you can also do this by hand you can hand quilt um, any kind of design on your mask before you do it before you finish it. So that is how you can quilt this particular mask. And, you know, I just said that, gee, each stitch kind of leaves a hole, which is true, um, but if you used a heavier embroidery thread to make your circles, the thread would fill the hole. Um, and I'll finish that in a second because one of the test masks I made of the other type, um, I had difficulty getting the uh, front seam to lay down right um, simply because of the way I had cut the fabric. So let me see. And again, this is a 1591, which is a very strong machine. But basically, uh, five layers of fabric is five layers of fabric. So if you end up with puckers, because you've made the other kind um, for the first time or something, um, not like me, who's made hundreds of them and still got them. I was saying, not like me, who has made hundreds of them and still got puckers. Um, so let's do another circle on here. Uh, my camera's been acting funny this morning. So these, um, if you're off at all on when you line up the seam allowances, you're going to get some unevenness in the fabric. You don't have to go ahead and quilt it. This has been washed a couple of times, um, but you can quilt it if you want. And you can see that a flower foot on a straight stitch machine is wonderful. Not only for uh, correcting any kind of puffiness or anything, it's just wonderful anyway. A quilted face mask is comfor comforting and comfortable and um, I can't see that microns are going to get through that. This one has flannel on the inside. Um, and as you wash these, the fabric tends to wrap around the stitches anyway, but you'll have to think about whether or not um, that ends up being some kind of a risk, that you feel it's a risk to have a quilted mask. 
But now I'm going to go back to quilting the rectangular mask that anybody can sew by hand. You can do all of this quilting by hand. And then I'm going to finish putting it together. Okay, I finished um, the amount of quilting I wanted to do on there. And now I have taken, this is a crocheted strand of acrylic yarn, and I've put, folded it in half, put the center in the center of the mask, and I just need to stitch this to the mask. As you can see, I've taken the flower foot off. And sometimes that happens with the 1591 where it pulls in um, the tail end of the thread. Let's get that out of the way, make sure that's down. put that on what's going to be the inside of the mask um, instead of the outside. You can do it either way. So there's the top and now I'll add the bottom one. It's very quick and fast to crochet a strand of worsted weight yarn um, in order to use for a strand on a mask. And um, I've been using wool. The wool will shrink a little bit, but um, acrylic works fine. The wool only shrunk like an inch. Um, the overall length of the strands should be 36 inches each. So with wool, you could go to 40 inches probably. keep the yarn as flat as possible because what will happen with the, the some presser feet will push it around so now we have the two strands on there and the last thing to do for this mask is to put a pleat or pleats in. And I have found um, on mine that one pleat on each side with each fold being about an inch is good. It works, works well. It keeps it tight enough on the sides yet opens up enough um, over your face and mouth to give you enough room. So this is, um, again, this is about 5, 10, 15 layers, 5, 10, 15 layers. Um, but with the disposable liner fabric, um, that's thinner than muslin. And I go over that side pleat a couple of times. And I do the same thing on the other side. And then you have a quilted face mask that um, if you were doing all of this by hand, it would take a little bit longer, but it would still be the same face mask. And now it's five layers. And 
like I said, this tight ties around the back of your neck and um, up on your head. But there is a face mask. It does not have any kind of a nose bridge in it. But I was thinking, um, you know, technically we're making face masks to protect little particles from getting in near our faces or out near other people's faces. And so quilting then does poke a bunch of little holes into the fabric. Um, so you might want to use it, for example, like if I'm walking the dog and I don't think I'm going to run into anybody. Um, I don't think I would wear a quilted mask to the doctor's office where everybody there might be sick in one way or another. So you can you can still make quilted masks um, and enjoy quilting, but maybe just use them in different applications than non-quilted masks. Um, so now when I wash this, this is gonna be a very comfortable mask. This is like having a quilt with you, you know, which alleviates some of the stress we're all going through with having to wear face masks. I just wanted to add that when um, I held that quilted face mask up, you could see through the, uh, where the quilting was. And um, here's the other one I was doing, and you can't see through that where I quilted it in, in any places. So I don't know if it was the muslin, whereas this has flannel um, and the fabric fills in. But, you know, people need choices in face masks. I'm making five layer face masks because I'm high risk. My friend bought um, face masks that don't go down as far um, under the chin as mine do um, with filters. So um, <clears throat> I've already thrown the rectangular one in the wash, but um, you could make a rectangular one quilted and then add a non-quilted pocket to put a filter in. And I just think that, um, you know, obviously when you quilt something, you put a bunch of holes in it, but I just tried to blow through that muslin rectangular mask and I can't blow through it. So I don't know how much the thread fills the hole. I just think that we shouldn't give up all of our sewing arts um, and walk around with you know, face masks on, especially if we're sewers, that may not reflect all of our talent. So you could um, put a pocket on the inside of that. You could use it. A lot of people are wearing two masks. Another person I talked to the other day would rather wear two masks than a five layer. So you could put a disposable surgical mask under that quilted mask and then you'd have no problem at all because the surgical masks are three layers. So you'd have a total of eight layers, but three layers to block whatever the quilting might let in. So, you know, we need to be aware and um, medically aware, but we don't have to give everything up either. We can find ways around um, style and prettiness or functionality um, and, you know, still use all of our skills.